In the world of outdoor television producing, 200 original episodes is a career milestone. For 16 seasons, Fishing 411 TV has created educational, exciting, and entertaining television content for the Sportsman Channel and World Fishing Network. All of this content has been aimed at helping other anglers become more successful on the water. In this week's episode, Mark and Jake celebrate 16 years of national television by revisiting three of their favorite filming and fishing experiences. In the fourth segment of the show, Mark and Jake narrate some never before seen brown trout footage that is going to leave viewers speechless. Everyone thinks about salmon in the Great Lakes, of course, they think of Pacific salmon, things like coho and king salmon. And Atlantic salmon are a completely different species. Their life cycle is different. Uh, their eating habits are different. Everything about them is different. The one thing, though, that is pretty similar to Pacific salmon is these fish like to chew early in the day, low light. So if you're going to target them, you need to be out early and you need to be out late. So you're going to see a lot of sunrises and you're going to see a lot of sunsets if you target Atlantic salmon. Oh my goodness, Dad, what a beautiful fish. <laughs> lift up. Go ahead and lift up. Oh, oh no. A, swing and a miss. He's in the diver. Er, oh, down there. Okay, he's, he's, he's still there. He's still there. Whew. My heart is pounding. What a beautiful fish. What a beautiful fish. And it's typical of Atlantic salmon. Fish, as soon as he saw the boat, the he boat. went crazy. He did not like that. He went crazy. So about the time you think you own them, you do not own them. Back to the leader, right? I'm back to the leader. We should start to see some color on this fish here quickly. All right, why don't you try taking a couple steps back? There he goes again. Oh. There he goes again. How many again. times has that leg cork gone back out? That's the third time now. So, Let's see if we can't get him to tire up a little bit here. Doesn't really get much better than this. Awesome, awesome that sunrise cool. coming over Drummond Island. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's see if we can get him this time. Got him in the scoop, Dad! Wow! Oh, beautiful! Beautiful Atlanta! Wow! wow. <laughs> I cannot wait to show you this fish. This is one of the coolest fish I've ever caught in my life. I'm telling you, this is a cool fish. Look at that! <laughs> Whoa! My word. That big old cape on him. Woo! Now that is a fish that you will remember. If you come to Detour Passage and you catch a salmon like this, you will absolutely remember it. Woo, baby. That's special. That is special. 14.9. And you know, we've done a lot of research with Atlantic salmon. And of course they're like any salmon, so they're looking for that temperature, that 50, 55 degree range. You gotta remember this is basically influenced straight from Lake Superior, so we got a lot of cold water coming in, and this is the furthest northern part of Lake Huron. And so even though it's the summertime, this water's still really cold, and so these fish really can be anywhere. They can be right on the surface or they can be deep. And so right now, I think our deepest line that we have out is only 40 feet. So when you're looking at open water salmon fishing, that's very reachable. Those fish are reachable with a lot of different tactics, a lot of different things. Uh, so your downriggers and your divers, and of course your lug cores will be able to get to those depths, 
no problem. And you don't have to fish those long, long leg cores. It makes it a lot easier. Like this is an SG27LC, literally a walleye reel with a three color leg core on it. It doesn't get much better than that. I'm gonna take this board off really quick. There you go, Jake. I'm almost to the leader. Oh, he's a jumper! That's, That's so cool. exciting. That's exciting. There's that silver streak just pegged in the corner. I love it. You're on a good course, keep them coming just the way you are, Jakers. That is so cool. Woo. Just when you think you got them, you don't got them. Wow, is this is fish so much fun. I think we got them this time here. A little closer. Whoa! I got you. Oh, net, that spoon yeah. just popped. Look at oh that. man. You know, when you start the show with a fish as big as we started, then they all look small. But this is really what we're after. This is that, you know, that football size, that six to eight pound range. And that's what this area is really known for. It's just big, beautiful, healthy Atlantics. Um, not necessarily monsters like the ones that we caught right away this morning, but um, Man, they more mimic a brown trout than anything. They're thick in the shoulders like a football. It's absolutely awesome. And just look how beautiful that fish is. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Oh my god, you guys see that? Oh my god. Let me get him in the scope. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. How much better does that get right there? A big, big Lake wow. Superior Lake Trout. Crystal clear water. <laughs> kind of speechless right now. That's exactly what you come to Standard Rock for, is a size of trout like that, and on a jig. A jigging rod, how much better does it get than that? What do you think of that deal? Alright. <laughs> now that is a standard rock lake trout. Right. My word. Oh baby. I haven't fully pulled tight on him yet, but I was actually reeling it straight up. I let that one sink all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, that's a good fish, Travis. Jake, it's that looks trip. real good. You know, like I said, you gotta find yourself a good guide because he gave me the bait that he just caught that last big one on. <laughs> I tie it on, make 10 casts, and now I'm catching a big one. So that's pretty darn cool. Yeah, baby. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, baby. Big fish. Coming down to the depths. Big fish. <sighs> Look at that. Take me right back down to the bottom again. Look at that reel. <laughs> that's exactly like that last one. Oh, he does not want to quit. I've seen a lot of big fish get caught, and this one's definitely in the big fish category. Whenever a rod's bent like that, we yell, big net, big net. You know, a lot of times we'll have a smaller net for some of these, you know, medium-sized fish we catch, and it's a good sign. I just want to yell big net all the time, you know. Well, Jake, you only have one size one. net. You must only catch big fish, that's man. That's it, that's it. <laughs> I had some high expectations coming to the rock. You know, I've mentioned it multiple times today, but it's a bucket list destination. We've done multiple shows here at Standard Rock. And we get a lot of people that'll email us after the show airs and stuff and talk about how it's been on their bucket list for 20, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. It needs to go to the top of your bucket list. It's a cool, cool destination to come and catch big, giant lake trout and about as remote as you can possibly be. I mean, sure we're not. a long ways away from home. <laughs> Jeez, Jake, you've been pretty quiet here for a little while. It's gotta be a good fish, man. Just hooking them is one thing. Yeah. Getting them to the boat's a whole nother story. Oh, and it's, yeah. It's been a long day on the water, and we've been blessed with catching some good fish, a lot of fish. I mean, just trout in general, we caught a lot today. Right. But uh, being able to catch the one that we came here for, and, and I, you know, the big fish that we caught today, we obviously came here to catch those. Oh, yeah. It never gets old, my friend. <laughs> never gets old. If you wanted my blood pumping, you got it. Look at this dinosaur, Travis. That's a big fish, Oh Jake. my God, man, we gotta get this thing in there. Get him in there. Yeah! yeah! What a giant, Travis, that thing is massive. Jake. Yeah, oh, buddy. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> Dude, this just cost you a fortune. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, oh boy. I wish on camera you could feel how hard my chest is pumping right now. That <laughs> is a monster. Oh, this is a toad of a fish. A toad of a fish. That's probably getting into the mid to upper 30s at the very least, oh, I bet you, Jake. Oh, Oh, baby. I think it goes without saying, you need to come to Standard Rock. Where else are you going to catch a lake trout of that size? That is not only a fish of a lifetime, that's a fish of 10 lifetimes. <laughs> and Jake's wow. a big guy, and this wow. fish is making you struggle, man. Yeah, that's a big fish. Look at these fins. I mean, the size of our hands here, the tail, the power of these fish, incredible. Wow, we're gonna keep them in the live while keeping them drinking, because that's... Travis, how old do you think that fish is? When a fish gets up to this size, Jake, in Lake Superior, they're growing less than a, a half a pound to a pound per year maximum. That's probably at least a 50-year-old fish. This thing's been out here forever. It's been out here since this light has probably been manned, I bet you. That is unbelievable. <laughs> Just think about that, how long this fish has been in the Great Lakes. Yeah. And we're not ready for him to end his life in the Great Lakes. No. So we want to get some pictures and we want to get her back. Yeah. An unbelievable fight. Yeah. Travis, it goes without saying, my friend. Thank you so much for taking us out here, showing us your numbers, that kind of stuff. But you gotta come to Standard Rock. <laughs> Look at that trout, baby, that's a giant. Uh, Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. If you're a live bait fisherman, chances are you're familiar with something called a slip sinker rig. It's a basic live bait rig that allows you to pull bait along the bottom and then when a fish bites, you can feed line to the fish, let them get the bait down their mouth and then close the bale, come tight on the fish and set the hook. It's a deadly presentation and something that folks have been doing for many, many years. The basic setup for it is typically done with these walking style sinkers and they come in different shapes and colors and sizes and they work pretty good. But the problem with the walking sinker is they are going to snag. It's a matter of fact that if you're pulling them along the bottom, it's only a matter of time until they do snag and you're potentially going to lose your whole rig. There's another option you might want to consider and they're called slinky sinkers. Now Eagle Claw produces these all bait up. A lot of guys historically have made their own slinkies, but if you're not that guy, if you want to just buy something and take it out and fish, these slinky sinkers are going to work really good. And the basic setup I have here, I'm just using an ice fishing rod here just for illustration. Obviously we don't use these on ice fishing rods, but you'll see when I'm talking about here how a slinky sinker works. Essentially what I've done is I've started by threading a bead onto the line. Then I put a snap onto the line and on the snap I've attached the slinky. Then I put another bead on the line and then I've gone to a ball bearing swivel and from there I can add my leader and my terminal tackle, a worm or a minnow or a leech, whatever I'm using. The beauty of this system is, is as I'm fishing, that slinky is just going to drag along the bottom and you'll be amazed what you can pull this through without snagging. So you can fish simply any place that you can fish on the bottom, you can get by with a slinky. Then when a fish bites, if you want to open the bale, you can thread line out to the fish, let him run and then you can reel up the slack and set the hook you know, when you want to set the hook. So a slinky is a super option in that regard. Now, slinkies come in different sizes. They start in a quarter ounce. You can get them in three eighths, you can get them in half, you can get them in five eighths, three quarters. You can get them in one ounce, ounce and a quarter, and even up to an ounce and a half. So effectively, you can fish anything from 10 feet of water all the way out to 50 feet of water with the slip sinker rig. Now, obviously, this is something the walleye guys are gonna be all about, but it works very well on other species like northern pike and also smallmouth bass. If you haven't checked out a slinky sinker from Eagle Claw, you're gonna wanna check these out because if you're a bottom fisherman and you fish live bait, it is absolutely Absolutely the one system that guarantees you will not snag.
Look at there. We are hooked up. Ooh, baby. Oh, man. We're playing with some new toys. We have ourselves a, uh, a new set of riggers on the boat. And uh, this is new technology for us. It's something called bottom track. And I'm telling you, it is cool. What it does is it allows a downrigger ball to follow the contour of the bottom. <laughs> and I mean, that is something special. So if you can picture where your downrigger ball is running in the water column, in a traditional downrigger, as soon as the water depth changes, you have to run back to the rigger and you have to change the depth manually. You have to raise it or lower it. But with these cannons and this bottom track, it does that for you. Oh, baby. This is just thumping. I sneak under here, Dad, and clean that rigger up so we don't have to worry about them getting tangled into that. Okay. Thank you, Jake. Nice to see this fish, Daddy. He's staying he's, down crazy. He's right there. He's right there, straight down. And uh, he just is dogging it. He won't give I up. I still haven't seen him. Oh my goodness, Dad. That is a beautiful brown trout. A little closer. Nice fish, Dad. Holy cow. Come on out of there, puppy. Now that is a brown trout. <laughs> you want to catch these fish, Lake Ontario is a great place to be. There's no question about it. Lake Ontario stocks more browns than just about anywhere else. And they grow big, as you can see from this one. Man, oh man, that is a toad. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Dioa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. This is just on a mono rod. We're gonna get more into detail about our setup here, but this is just a, like a walleye type trolling setup with 10 pound mono. And then what we're doing is something that's called the 50 plus two method. And that's something that we've uh, come up with a precision trolling to figure out how to get baits to get to depth, to get deeper by using snap weights. And in this case, we're using a 3.5 maglet with a two ounce offshore tackle snap weight. And I'm running it back a total of 100 feet back, 50 foot to the snap weight, and then an additional 50 foot is getting this bait down deeper than what it can do on its own. Pretty heavy fish, Dad. I guess so. Oh, baby. Very right. nice. So now he just took the snap weight off. Now it's 50 feet back to the fish. And it's just me and the fish at this point. I'm a little worried about the size of the net here. Oh, we'll get him out of there. That's a beautiful fish, man. Let's try and get him all the way in the net. A little closer, Jake. Woo, look at that thing. He is not happy, that's he for sure. He is not happy as well. Can bet up. What a gorgeous fish. We can get him going the right direction now here, Dad. There we go. Oh man, he's a little bit on the wrong side for me. A little closer. Get him there. Nice fish. <laughs> oh my goodness, Dad, let's pull this fish up. This is exactly why we came to Lake Ontario, to catch summertime brown trout. More specifically, big brown trout. That is the definition of a football right there. Brown trout in the rain. This is unorthodox, Jake, but it might come right here by the corner of the rigger. Let's see if I can get him. Normally, I would not do that. Oh, oh man. Beautiful fish, that is a, That's a toad. That is a toad. That is a gorgeous Woo. fish. That's a handful right there. Brown trout. Man, I love them. Big brown trout. And believe it or not, it's July. You'd never expect that you could catch them in July, but if you know where to go and you know what to do, you can get brown trout even in the summertime. Look at that. Whoo, baby. 
Hey, I'm Mark Romanak, and thanks for watching Fishing 4-on-1. I hope you've enjoyed our 200th episode celebration. It's really been our pleasure for the last 16 years bringing quality fishing content to the Sportsman Channel and World Fishing Network. Hey, if you like what you've seen here today, please check us out on Facebook and consider signing up for our weekly newsletter. Until next week, we'll see you right here at the same place, same time. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Woo! Oh, there he is right there. It's a nice one. It's a nice one right here, Spence. We got him. We got him. Good job, Spence. Woo! Oh, look at this, Spence. High five, bud. Nice. That's a good one right there.